there and welcome to another guinea pig parkour devlog. In today's episode we're going to be taking a look at an engine I'm working with. If you've been following the progress of uh, the development of guinea pig parkour then you'll know that what I've been focusing on up until this point has been basically getting some basic parkour moves to operate in the game. Basically making the animations and then getting those animations to function as gameplay. And now that I've been able to create a number of different parkour moves, I wanted to start the process of being able to actually have a level that you can interact with and that will have some sort of challenge so I can start to get a feel for the gameplay as it will be more like when the game's finished. So I'm going to go ahead and get started here. So as you can see, what I've done is um, I've updated the graphics of the actual objects that you interact with. Uh, before they were just solid colors. And now what I've done is given them some sort of Tron-like design. Um, these are all placeholder graphics, but I wanted to make it a little bit more interesting than just the solid colors. So. The first thing you'll probably notice is that these um, blocks that Joe is interacting with actually appear on screen and then disappear. So I made a couple animations. One is the appearing animation where it sort of comes into existence and then on the left side of the screen as it exits the frame it actually disappears. I've also added a bunch of these little computer chips that can't quite tell what they are so I'll um, I'll obviously be changing, well I'll be changing all these graphics, but um, anyway the computer chips give you points when you collect them, so just to add a score mechanic to the game right now. And the big new development um, is that I'm actually, this, this level is actually being generated on the fly randomly, and up until this point I've just placed the level objects as I've been testing them and so I actually created a fair bit amount of code to be able to randomly generate sections of the level so that you can basically play it forever until you die and it's never the same twice although there's only about 15 different level sections that it has to generate from so not a whole lot of variety right now and the actual moves that Joe's doing are just the tip of the iceberg as far as how many moves are going to be in the final version. Um, but this gives me a good starting place so that I can both work with adding new moves into the game and also adding new sections of level to start thinking about how this game is going to progress and sort of how, how to make it challenging and fun and all that stuff. It's um, it's a it's too, a little bit too abstract when you're just making the moves, um, and at least being able to randomly generate the level, I can have a little bit more of a feeling for being surprised because obviously if I place all the objects down, then I know exactly how the level plays, and then it's really hard to get a feel for being surprised. So let's take a look behind the scenes here, put on the debug view, and this is what's actually being interacted with as far as the code is concerned. Um, see, here's what it looks like with the graphics, so you can see how it kind of lines up. But basically all these solid colored blocks are actually what is being programmed, and the graphics just use these colored blocks as reference. So whenever I'm programming something, I'm actually programming it around these solid colors. Um, and so as far as this automatically randomly generated level goes, the way that's working is there are two solid lines on the left and right side there. And the one on the left, whenever it collides with that two-toned um, rectangle underneath everything there. Whenever it collides with that, it will push that to the right, 
and whenever it's pushed to the right, it will be triggered to to randomly create um, a section of level. And you can actually tell which section of level it created based on the color of the left hand side of that bar. So that's a dark blue, that's a red, and um, that sort of indicates which section of level it's randomly generating. And it's amazing how complicated doing things like this is, especially for someone like me who's not really a programmer. Um, Because you have to figure out how to randomly generate something, or you have to figure out how to trigger it so that it creates that section of the level once. (laughs) For the longest time, I kept having code where it would create the section of the level like until all the objects the, until it reached the object limit of the program so there would be like a thousand copies of each object and um, basically the way I got around that was that I had it I had to create objects based on the frame number and because the frame number went by so um, quickly it uh, it only created it once. I believe that's how I solved that problem. No, that was my original way to solve it, actually. The way I solved it was, um, originally I had a a whole row of these bars, and, um, and whenever this line would collide with it, it would randomly change the bar's animation, and then that would determine what it created. But I found that having one bar and having it collide and push it at that moment, it creates all the objects, and that, that allowed me to do it so that it only created one set of objects. Anyway, um, not to get too boring there, but yeah, this is giving me a good idea um, for, for at least some of the beginning stages of how the game will play, and you know, this first version of the game is going to be a one-button infinite runner, um, but once that version of the game is done and released, I will be making a more sophisticated platformer. But I wanted to focus on something simple that would allow me to create all the assets and create the basic engine components and then build a more complicated thing after that's done. Because doing it all by myself, you know, everything just takes a really long time. So the thing is that um, the way this works is that you press the space bar and the space bar acts as both your jump key and your parkour move which changes based on context and so this game's all about timing depending on when you jump or when you press the space bar you know you'll either you could run into a object like that you could jump and not be able to get up in time or you might jump too early and hit a wall um so it's all about timing I still have a lot to figure out as far as how exactly it's going to play. Right now, um, I've watched a couple people test this out, and it's really important to watch people play it because, as the programmer, you just when you're uh, testing it out, you're just testing for bugs, and you're not thinking about how someone who's not familiar with the game will what they'll be expecting from each part of the gameplay, and. The biggest thing that I kept seeing was when Joe is getting up that they would keep tapping the spacebar. And that doesn't actually do anything because when he's getting up or rolling, you, your, um, your input doesn't do anything. And so what I, th- I have to figure out is how to balance the sort of complicated animation with responsive gameplay. So that's something I'll be thinking about for the next version and I'll also be adding more moves. I actually have a few more moves that I've already created the animations for but I just haven't programmed them in yet Um, because the direction you know the 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 thing that I want to do next or a big part of this game is going to be sort of combinations of moves so you know if you jump on one type of object and you time it right then you can do like a double jump and a flip and um, so there'll be a lot more strategy right now it's very basic basically the only timing thing is either jumping or 
um, doing the parkour move, and the most sophisticated thing I've incorporated is on the black, what looks like a black box in this version. Um, there are three ways you can interact with it. So you can either do that vault, or you can f uh, do a flip over it, or you can jump on top of it. And um, see, that's the vault. If, uh, if I time it differently, he'll do a flip over it. And if I time it er really early, he'll jump and roll on top of it. And that roll will actually be something where he'll be able to do a hand flip over the or fr um, from the box and get even higher. So the idea is that you can do different moves that will allow you to get to different sections of level and then you can really strategize your timing. And this version, there's a basic scorekeeping um, and technically it goes forever, but it only because it um, after you get to the end of the level section, it will spawn you to the beginning and it's very jarring right now. So um, that's something I'll be figuring out. So yeah, but it's nice to see it all kind of coming together and seeing it as gameplay as opposed to just sort of fragments. This is at least, you know, the building blocks of what I'll be using from here on out. And this challenge level is actually available to um, patrons on my Patreon. So if you subscribe, you can test all the all the sort of development levels and gameplay. And this is available as a um, in the web browser or as a downloadable executable file. So that is available. It'll be quite a while before I actually get like a um, you know beta version of the game. Right now it's real early alpha alpha testing, just getting the engine in place, getting things to work, um, and building the the foundation that I'll use for the rest of the game. So uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Um, consider becoming a patron. You can play this level and you'll be supporting the creation of this game. All right, see you next time.